Imagine a man who was given visions of the end from the beginning. Imagine a man who was taken up to heaven and was shown everything. Imagine a man in whom the fallen angels begged to intercede for them after they rebelled against the Most High. Imagine a man who was shown the most detailed account of Yahusha, the Son of Man, the King of Kings, the Holy One of Yahuwah. Imagine a man who has instructions for you, the last generation. This is Enoch, and the book he wrote for us, and the video you are about to watch lays out the directives he was given directly from Yahuwah to you. The video you are about to watch is part two of a three-part series. In part one, we went over many important details about this book to prove its authenticity, to show you that Jude quoted directly from it. And that our savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, taught directly from it. If you have not seen part one, I highly encourage you to watch that first and return back here. A link will be provided for you. So now that we have established that this is a genuine text and that it is written for you, yes, you specifically, let's move on to the instructions left for you as we move towards the end of this book of prophecy. Starting at chapter 93. We are not to have a spirit of fear. Let not your spirit be troubled on account of the times. For the Holy and Great One has appointed days for all things. And the Righteous One shall arise from sleep, shall arise and walk in the paths of righteousness. And all his path and conversation shall be in eternal goodness and grace. He will be gracious to the righteous and give him eternal uprightness. And he will give him power so that he shall be endowed with goodness and righteousness. And he shall walk in eternal light. Praise Yahuwah for Yahusha who showed us the way and has endowed us with the power of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. Also, just as we have been told several times to not fear or be troubled, as when this day comes, we shall have joy and others shall weep. Take a look at 2nd Ezra chapter 2. Do not be anxious, for when the day of tribulation and anguish comes, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but you shall rejoice and have abundance. The nations shall envy you, but shall not be able to do anything against you, says the Lord, Yahuwah. Love uprightness and walk therein, and draw not nigh to uprightness with a double heart. Because brothers and sisters, as we know, he who has a double heart or is double minded is unstable in all his ways. And associate not with those of a double heart, but walk in righteousness, my sons, and it shall guide you on good paths, and righteousness shall be your companion. For I know that violence must increase on the earth, and great chastisement be executed on the earth, and all unrighteousness come to an end, yea, it shall be cut off from its roots, and its whole structure be destroyed, and unrighteousness shall be again consummated on the earth. And all the deeds of unrighteousness and violence and transgression shall prevail in a twofold degree. And when sin and unrighteousness and blasphemy and violence and all kinds of deeds increase, and apostasy and transgression and uncleanness increase, a great chastisement shall come from heaven upon all these. And the Holy Lord Yahuwah will come forth with wrath and chastisement to execute judgment on earth. In those days, violence shall be cut off from its roots, and the roots of unrighteousness together with deceit, and they shall be destroyed from under heaven, and all the idols of the heathen shall be abandoned, and the temples burned with fire, and they shall remove them from the whole earth, and they, the heathen, shall be cast into the judgment of fire, and shall perish in wrath and in grievous judgment forever. 
and the righteous shall arise from their sleep, and wisdom shall arise and be given unto them. Truly, these are words to heed and direct instructions from above. Next, we will see the power of Yahuwah as he gave Enoch access to the heavenly tablets. And Enoch recited the end from the beginning. Watch and be amazed at our Father's handiwork. Concerning the children of righteousness, and concerning the elect of the world, and concerning the plant of uprightness, I will speak these things. Yea, I, Enoch, will declare them unto you, my sons. According to that which appeared to me in the heavenly vision, and which I have known through the word of the holy angels, and have learnt from the heavenly tablets, and Enoch began to recount from the books and said, I was born the seventh and the first week, while judgment and righteousness still endured. And after me there shall arise in the second week great wickedness, and deceit shall have sprung up, and in it there shall be the first end, and in it a man shall be saved. And after it is ended, unrighteousness shall grow up, and a law shall be made for the sinners. And after that, in the third week, at its close, a man shall be elected as the plant of righteous judgment, and his posterity shall become the plant of righteousness forevermore. And after that, in the fourth week, at its close, visions of the holy and righteous shall be seen, and a law for all generations, and an enclosure shall be made for them. And after that, in the fifth week, at its close, the house of glory and dominion shall be built forever. And after that, in the sixth week, all who live in it shall be blinded, and the hearts of all them shall godlessly forsake wisdom, and in it a man shall ascend. And at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire, and the whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed. And after that, in the seventh week, shall an apostate generation arise, and many shall it be its deeds, and all its deeds shall be apostate. And at its close shall be elected the elect righteous of the eternal plant of righteousness, to receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. For who is there of all the children of men that is able to hear the voice of the Holy One without being troubled? And who can think his thoughts? And who is there that can behold all the works of heaven? And how should there be one who could behold the heaven? And who is there that could understand the things of heaven, and see a soul or a spirit, and could tell thereof, or ascend, and see all their ends, and think them, or do like them? And who is there of all men that could know what is the breadth and the length of the earth, and to whom has been shown the measure of all of them? Or is there anyone who could discern the length of the heaven, and how great is its height, and upon what it is founded, and how great is the number of the stars, and where all the luminaries rest? This is just like Jeremiah 31, 37. Thus says the Lord Yahuwah, If the heavens above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth below can be explored, then I will cast off all the offspring of Israel for all that they have done, declares the Lord Yahuwah. And after that, there shall be another, the eighth week, that of righteousness. And a sword shall be given to it, that a righteous judgment may be executed on the oppressors. And sinners shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous. And at its close they shall acquire houses through their righteousness. And a house shall be built for the great king in glory forevermore. And all mankind shall look to the path of uprightness. And after that, in the ninth week, the righteous judgment shall be revealed to the whole world, and all the works of the godless shall vanish from all the earth, and the world shall be written down for destruction. And after this, in the tenth week, in the seventh part, there shall be the great eternal judgment, in which he will execute vengeance amongst the angels. And the first heaven shall depart and pass away, and a new heaven shall appear and all the powers of the heavens shall give sevenfold light. And after that, there will be many weeks without number forever, and all shall be in goodness and righteousness, and sin shall no more be mentioned forever. This is eternity. Truly amazing. Many of us know the verse Isaiah 46.10. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. I pray.
pray that now, after hearing this, gives even more depth to this scripture. After reading from the tablets and revealing Yahuwah's authority, Enoch then proceeds to reinforce the purpose of all of this. And now I say unto you, my sons, love righteousness and walk therein. For the paths of righteousness are worthy of acceptation, but the paths of unrighteousness shall suddenly be destroyed and vanish. And to certain men of a generation shall the paths of violence and of death be revealed, and they shall hold themselves far from them, and shall not follow them. And now I say unto you, the righteous, walk not in the paths of wickedness, nor in the paths of death, and draw not nigh to them, lest ye be destroyed. But seek and choose for yourselves righteousness and an elect life, and walk in the paths of peace, and ye shall live and prosper. And hold fast my words in the thoughts of your hearts, and suffer them not to be affected from your hearts. For I know that sinners will tempt men to evilly entreat wisdom, so that no place may be found for her, and no manner of temptations may minish. A few major points we must understand in this passage. Follow righteousness. What is righteousness? Our enemy purposefully is working against the truth of Yahuwah and is on a mission to turn you from his law, precepts, and ways. One chapter in Psalms truly embodies all this as David with the instruction of the Holy Spirit. Listen and hear. Psalm 1 Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of Yahuwah. And on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord, Yahuwah, knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. I pray, brothers and sisters, that you are starting to see the big picture here. Chapter 95 Oh, that mine eyes were a cloud of waters, that I might weep over you and pour down my tears as a cloud of waters, so that I might rest from my trouble of heart. This is so strikingly resembling Jeremiah 9.1. As it's clear he got the same inspiration from the Holy Spirit that Jeremiah had, or Jeremiah was quoting him. And truly, most of us have felt this way. Jeremiah 9.1 Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Back to Enoch, who has permitted you to practice reproaches and wickedness, and so judgment shall overtake you sinners? Fear not the sinners, ye righteous, for again will the Lord Yahuwah deliver them into your hands, that ye may execute judgment upon them according to your desires. We must live this, just as Yahusha told us in Matthew 10.28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Next, we get more reinforcement of this comfort, which I know we could all use right now. Praise Yahuwah. Chapter 96 Be hopeful, ye righteous, for suddenly shall the sinners perish before you, and ye shall have lordship over them according to your desires. And in the day of the tribulation of the sinners, your children shall mount and rise as eagles, and higher than the vultures will be your nest, and ye shall ascend and enter in the crevices of the earth, and the clefts of the rock forever as conies before the unrighteous, and the sirens shall sigh because of you and weep. Wherefore, fear not, ye that have suffered, for healing shall be your portion, and a bright light shall enlighten you, and the voice of rest ye shall hear from heaven. I can't help but think of Isaiah 40, a beloved verse for many of us, and how well it weaves into this. Have ye not known, have ye not heard, the Lord Yahuwah is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. 
he gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord Yahuwah shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What a powerful set of words of comfort to our souls. Praise Yahuwah, and surely we will wait on him as he has said many times. And here is one example. Zephaniah 3, 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord Yahuwah, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Next, we will see a bit of more confirming evidence of the days we live in and more instructions. And now I swear unto you, to the wise and to the foolish, for ye shall have manifold experiences on the earth. For ye men shall put on more adornments than a woman, and colored garments more than a virgin, in royalty, and in grandeur, and in power, and in silver, and in gold, and in purple, and in the splendor, and in the food shall they be poured out as water. Therefore they shall be wanting in doctrine and wisdom, and they shall perish thereby together with their possessions, and with all their glory and their splendor. And in shame, and in slaughter, and in great destitution, their spirit shall be cast into the furnace of fire. Concerning the wise and the foolish, just as ancient Israel was led out of the bondage of Egypt, and was tested in the wilderness, so is this true for us today. We have been freed from the bondage of sin and led into the wilderness of this life to test us and to prove us whether we will obey his words or not. Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 3. All the commandments which I command thee this day ye shall observe to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord sware unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord, Yahuwah, thy God, led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the lord yahuwah doth man live. Also, Deuteronomy 8.16, Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee, to do thee good at thy latter end. We are in the latter end. What has been is what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes 1 9. Just as it was promised to the Church of Philadelphia, see and hear this verse with your spiritual eyes and ears. And to the angel of the Church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth.